Hi, my name is Dr. Tishon. In this video, we are going to solve a related rates problem. I put this related rates problem in the description below, so let's go ahead and read it together. So we want to see if this person's going to get a speeding ticket or not, huh? So suppose, suppose a patrolman is sitting 50 feet off a straight road and he is pointing his radar gun at a car coming down the road. At the instant the car is 200 feet down the road from the patrolman, the radar says the distance between the patrolman and the car is decreasing at a rate of 100 feet per second. So at this instant, how fast is this car moving down the road? So let's see how fast the car is going. So with related rates problem, you probably want to see if you can draw a diagram to help to see what the situation looks like. And then once you have your diagram drawn, figure out an equation that relates the variables in the diagram. And then once you have that set up, maybe go back to the word problem, figure out what the quantities are, label the quantities that are given to you and identify what you have to find. So what do we have in this problem? We have a car coming down the road, okay? So we're going to draw this right here horizontal. This would be our road, okay? And this would be our car, all right, driving this way down the road, okay? All right? And then we have a patrolman sitting off the road, okay? So we're going to put the patrolman here, okay? So 90 degrees off the road. We have a patrolman sitting up here off the road. So this is where the patrol car is going to be. Okay, so here's my patrolman. I'll put a little, uh, you know, just uh, patrolman with the little lights. Okay, so we've got a patrol car, and this patrolman is pointing his radar gun at this car coming down the road. Okay, so he's pointing his radar gun coming uh, at the car coming down the road. So I want to label my diagram. I always label horizontal with an X. I'm going to put some variables in. I'm going to label my vertical side with a Y. I'm going to label the diagonal with a Z. I'm going to call my triangle as triangle X, Y, and Z for the sides, okay? Now, what is happening here, all right, as my car is driving down the road towards the patrolman, X is getting smaller, okay? So X is getting smaller. It's changing. It's changing. Okay? And then as the car is driving down the road, the distance between the car and the patrolman, that distance Z is getting smaller. Okay? So as my car moves down the road, X is getting smaller and Z is getting smaller. Okay? But what about Y? What about this distance over here? This patrolman is 50 feet off the road and that distance is not changing. This doesn't always happen in these related rates problems, but when you have a situation in a diagram and you know one of those variables is a constant, you can actually put the constant in there. I'm going to wipe out this Y variable. We know this patrol car is 50 feet off the road. It's not changing, so it's okay to replace it with a number, okay? So again, as the car drives down the road, X is getting smaller and Z is getting smaller, but 50 feet off the road, that, that patrol car is still sitting 50 feet off the road. So here's our diagram. We want to write an equation that relates the variables. And our variables are the sides of a right triangle. So what is an equation from a math class from once upon a time that you might have used to relate the sides of a right triangle? And that would be Pythagorean theorem. So setting up Pythagorean theorem here, we're going to take the sum of the squares of the legs, okay? So we're going to take the x squared and the 50 as the other leg, right? So 50 squared, we're going to add, uh, set that equal to the hypotenuse squared, okay? So the sum of the squares of the legs. Um, is equal to the hypotenuse squared. So here is our equation that relates the variables, okay? So our possible variables, so we're going to have to come up with a, an expression for the x and the z, okay? So x and z are the variables. x is the distance down the road the car, okay? And then z is the distance between the patrol car, all right? Also, we're going to have the rate the car is going. That's going to be dx over dt. dx over dt is the speed the car is going. Okay, so it's the distance over time. It's the, how fast the car is going with respect to time. You may have remembered in a previous math class that distance equals rate times time. Well, these we're finding rates here. So if distance, if distance is equal to the rate times the time, well, then we want to solve for rate. Divide both sides by time, right? Divide both sides by time. So distance divided by time is what you're going to do for an expression for the rate, okay? So your rate expression is going to be a distance over time representation. So the, dis the how fast is the car going? Well, that's going to be the distance of the car dx over time. 
okay? And then DZDT, the DZDT, the other variable that we have here that we have to consider when we assign our given and find, we have to consider DZDT, well DZ, that's, so DZ is the distance between the patrolman and the car, and then with respect to time, that's gonna be how fast it's changing, okay? So X is the distance the car is down the road, but DX, DT is how fast it's, it's going. Z is the distance between the car and the patrolman, DZ, DT is the change, how fast the, the uh, distance between the patrolman and the car is changing, okay? So these are the variables. So let's see what we have when we're looking at our numbers down below, we're looking at our numbers, okay? So it says that the distance between the patrolman and the car is decreasing at 100 feet per second. The distance between the patrolman and the car, this distance is decreasing at 100 feet per second. That's DZ, DT that they're giving us. They're giving us DZ, DT, all right? And it's decreasing, so you put a negative on that. That's how we do with the related rates problems, okay? So if it's decreasing because Z is decreasing, because it's getting smaller, okay? So the distance between the patrolman and the car, that distance is decreasing at 100 feet per second. So it's negative 100, that's the distance decreasing, 100 feet per second. So you can tell that it's distance over time, okay? At the instant that the car is 200 feet down the road, at the instant the car, at the instant that the car is 200 feet down the road, at the instant that X is 200, at the instant that X is 200, okay, how fast is the car going? We want to know what the speed of the car is. The speed of the car is dx over dt. So we want to find dx dt, all right? So this is what we have right now, and those are the variables that we had to assign. So we want to figure out what dx dt, we've got x is 200, and we know the d distance between the patrolman and the car is decreasing at 100. So we have these numbers, okay? Now what do we do next? Well, here's our equation that relates the variables. So the next thing we need is our rate of change equation. We have to get an equation that relates the variables with our, our derivatives in it, okay? So we are going to take every single term in our equation and we're gonna differentiate implicitly with respect to time. We wanna find the derivative of every single term implicitly with respect to time. So what is the derivative of x squared? It's 2x. That's the derivative of x with respect to t, derivative of uh, every variable with respect to time. Derivative of a constant is zero, so I'm not gonna write the zero, well, I'll write the zero there. Okay, so the derivative of a constant is zero, okay? Derivative of z squared, that's 2z, and that's the derivative of z with respect to time. We differentiate every variable with respect to time, okay? So here's our rate of change equation. All right. Now, what to do next? Well, we want to solve for dx dt. You see, we have to find the speed of the car. The speed of the car is dx dt. That's what we want to solve for. So we need to plug in values for all the rest, okay? So what do we have here? We have two times x is 200. dx dt, that's what we're solving for. So dx dt is our variable here, okay? On the right-hand side, we have two times we don't know what z is, so we're gonna to have to figure out z. We do know dz dt is a negative 100 though, okay? So we wanna solve for dx dt, dx dt is our variable, um, so we wanna solve for it. We still, we need to figure out what z is. We need to substitute something in for z, okay? So that a lot of times with these right triangle problems, you know, a lot of times if they don't give you all the values that you need, you gotta go figure some of them out yourself. So off to the side over here, let me see, what is our diagram looking like? This is our diagram off to the side, okay? So we have the 50 here and the X and the Z. This is what our diagram looks like, okay? So we know that the constant, this is 50, the, the patrolman's 50 feet off the road, that's not changing. All right, what do we want to do here though? At the instant that X is 200, right? We need to plug our Z number into the rate of change equation. So at the instant X is 200, at that instant, we want to figure out what Z is. So we're going to have to use Pythagorean theorem to figure out what our Z is. We're going to have to take 200 squared plus 50 squared and set that equal to Z squared. And we're going to have to solve for Z, okay? So when you go ahead and square those numbers, add them together, take the square root when you do this, you're gonna end up with z equal in 50 radical 17. That's the exact value of z, okay? So when you solve using the Pythagorean theorem, 50 radical 17, the decimal is around 206 point something. 
um, but 50 radical 17, and we'll put the exact number in. So, so z is 50 radical 17. All right, so now we have all of our numbers and we have to find dx dt. So probably get your calculator out for this one. So what is dx dt gonna equal? Well, it's gonna be two times 50 radical 17 times your negative 100. And we're gonna divide all that by the two times 200, okay? So that's what you're gonna, so just multiply that together, okay? Divide by 400. And then when you do this, let's see, what do you get when you compute all this? Put this in your calculator, be careful. Negative 25, negative 25 radical 17 is the exact answer, okay? All right, or if you want a decimal approximation for this, a decimal approximation, when you do plug this into your calculator, decimal approximation is negative 103, all right, 0.07. 0.077, this is feet, right? Feet per second, okay? So here's your decimal approximation answer. There's your exact answer, okay? Why is it negative? Why do we have negative? Because as the car is driving down the road, to closing in to, to where the patrolman is, as the car drives down the road, X is getting smaller, X is getting smaller, so you're, it's gonna be represented, the rate's gonna be represented as negative because X is getting smaller. So that's how these related rates problems works, okay? Now, 103.077 feet per second. So, I mean, there's a conversion if you want to think in miles per hour, because that's usually what we talk about when we're, um, we're with cars. But if you want to convert feet per second to miles per hour, you could take your feet per second, you divide it by 1.467. I think that's what the conversion is, okay? So to convert feet per second, so negative 103.077 feet per second, if you want to convert that to miles per hour, you would divide it by 1.467, believe that's what the conversion is, okay? And when you do, uh, when you do that, you get around, you get around 70.28. I think you get about 70.28 miles per hour, okay? So how far is this car going in miles per hour when you do the conversion? About 70 miles per hour, that's how far fast the car is going. So is the car speeding? I suppose it depends on where the car is. If the car's on an interstate, we're good. 70 miles an hour, that's usually what, um, what the speed is on an interstate, okay? But I suppose if the car's in a residential area, that would be a speeding ticket, a big one, okay? Anyways, this is the idea with related rates. Related rate, read the problem super carefully. Read the word problem super carefully, okay? And then what do you want to do? Just set up diagram, equation, given and find. Draw a diagram. Draw a really good diagram so you can see um, how the variables are related to each other. Use the diagram to set your equation up that relates the variables. Figure out what equation relates the variables depending on what you're given. Okay. Once you get your equation that relates the variables, you know you're going to need to find. So you're going to need given and find and you're going to go to all the numbers in the word problem and identify what they stand for. Okay. So in this case we had distance distance we had rate of change and rate of change so we had so you're going to have all your variables and all of their rates of change okay and see how they relate to one another that's why these are related rates all right and so once you have this set up you know just use this as a template to pull up the uh pulling apart the word problems once you have all this set up okay uh then you're going to implicitly differentiate your equation okay so implicitly differentiate with respect to time Okay, with respect to time, find derivatives of every single variable with respect to time, and then substitute your values in. Sometimes you have all the values you need, and sometimes, like in this case, we had to go and get that hypotenuse. We, at the instant the x was 200, we had to go ourselves, Pythagorean theorem, get the hypotenuse, plug it in and compute, okay? So related rates, um, I hope this helps with uh, Getting started with related rates anyway, so thank you so much for watching. If these videos do help you, I would appreciate if you would subscribe. Um, the button's down below. So, um, And again, this word problem, you could find it in the description bar below as well. So I, I typed it there for you. So, Okay, well, that's it. Thank you so much for um, tuning in and watching. Appreciate it, and take care. Bye-bye, everybody.